What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. I can't believe we're already coming up on the third month of 2022, but I'm so excited because that means spring is almost here and the cold will be gone soon. If you've watched my previous two plan with me's then you already know I start every new month with a chapter page. So because this is the third month of the year, I wrote chapter three in the theme color and loading underneath that with my black pen. And I also added the progress bar with three shaded boxes. Then on the other side of the cover page, I added my monthly header just below the middle of the page. And for the style, I first wrote March in all capital letters using my green zebra pen highlighter. And then I went back over just the top half of each letter to make that portion darker to give it a gradient look. And I finished off the header by writing March in its stretched out cursive at the bottom of the header, positioning each letter to the right side of the main header letters. And as you can now see, I chose a four leaf clover for my March theme, mainly because I wanted to use green, but also for St. Patrick's Day. So I just drew one large four leaf clover centered above the header to incorporate the theme into my cover page. And similar to last month's theme, I chose not to outline any drawings with my black pen because it keeps the spreads brighter without it. Next, for my calendar spread, I went back to my favorite simple layout and started by drawing just the horizontal lines of the calendar. I like not using the vertical lines because it makes the whole spread feel more open and each daily box has a little bit more room to write in. Then using the theme color, I highlighted the row just above the calendar, which is where I'll write in the days of the week, and I also highlighted the top section of each row of the calendar for the numbers. With the empty space at the top of the spread, I added my monthly header across just the left half of the page. As you'll see in one of the upcoming spreads, you could also stretch this header across the entire top portion of the spread, which I kind of wish I did on this one, but it's kind of too late for that now. Next, I filled in the highlighted portion above the calendar with the days of the week by writing just the first three letters of each day in cursive. And I also decided to have them all connect together, so to do that, I stretched both ends of each day to meet the neighboring days. And I chose cursive for this part to kind of match the cursive portion of the monthly header. To finish off the actual calendar, I wrote in the number for each day within the highlighted portion and also centered the numbers under each day of the week. And I ended up with some extra space off to the right of the calendar, so I decided to add both a to-do list and events list since I've enjoyed using both of those this past month. But I just wrote to-do and events at the top of each section in cursive and then highlighted every other row underneath those headers with the theme color. Then to finish off the spread, I just added four leaf clover drawings all around the page in the remaining empty spaces. And if you know my style, I organized them all in rows oriented the same way, and I also made them all the same size. You never need to be as organized as I am with these drawings, this is just how I like to make my spreads, so make sure that you're making your spreads in a way that works for you and motivates you to use it. For my first weekly spread, I went back to one of my favorite layouts. I haven't used it in a couple of months, so I thought I would bring it back for March. If you couldn't already tell, I like to use a lot of the same spreads, but I do try to rotate them out every month so I don't get bored with them. And every once in a while, I will tweak them a little bit to change things up too. But I started by writing my monthly header centered at the top of the page, and then I went on to my daily sections, starting with drawing a simple banner at the top of each section, and then finishing out the box by adding the sides and the bottom. For each section, I did leave the bottom right corner open so that I could add in a clover drawing, which is where I will write in the number for each day. And then I just colored in all of the banners using the theme color. Then in the extra space at the bottom right of the spread, I added my main to-do list section by writing main to-do in cursive using the theme color and then highlighting every other row beneath the header. And that one line that is messed up is really going to bug me, but that's what happens when I'm not fully paying attention. I did try to fix it off camera and it's a little better, but hopefully it won't be as noticeable when I start writing over it. This just shows you that everyone makes mistakes in their journals and we all just have to embrace it sometimes. 
Next, I moved on to incorporating the theme to the spread by drawing a four-leaf clover in the empty corner of each daily section, as well as drawing two four-leaf clovers on either side of the monthly header. You'll notice throughout this video that I didn't use any mini calendars in my weekly spreads, and I actually do like them better without it. But if you like to use them, then there's always a space to add them in by removing some drawings. And lastly, I wrote in the days of the week within the banners using a simple all capital lettering as well as the number for each day within the clovers. My second weekly spread is similar to the one that I used in February, but I changed it slightly to give it a different feel. I started by drawing seven vertical columns centered across the entire spread, but separated the top third from the bottom two thirds to create two different sections for each day, one for events and another for tasks. I've seen other people do something similar to this where they had two sections for each day, and I thought I would try it out to see how I like it since I've been using an events section a bit lately. Next, I added the monthly header and stretched it all across the top of the spread, making sure each letter was evenly spaced apart. You could also make it the same way as the previous spread where it's more condensed and add some drawings on either side, but I didn't want to use the same style for back-to-back -back spreads, so I chose to stretch it out. Then, moving back to the daily sections, I wrote in tasks and events across the left edge to denote what each section was for. and. After that, I wrote in the first three letters of each day in cursive across the top of the lower box. And I stretched out each end of the days so that they would all be connected and also be incorporated into the outline of the boxes. Next, I incorporated the theme to the spread by adding four leaf clovers in the empty space at the top of the events boxes. And like the previous spread, this is where I will write in the number for each day. I love using the theme to highlight the days lately because I feel like it emphasizes the box more and it also gives more opportunity to use the theme. In addition to this, I also added a larger four leaf clover to each of the bottom corners of the spread. And this would be the perfect place to add in the mini calendar if you wanted to add one. To complete the daily sections, I just added in the number for each day within the clovers and then finished off the spread by adding a main to-do list centered at the bottom of the page, separated into two columns. For my next weekly spread, I went with a more open and minimal layout since the previous two were so full. So I started by separating the entire spread into eight equal and horizontal sections, and unlike my other spreads, I made the daily sections take up most of the entire spread. Then I added the monthly header in the extra eighth section at the bottom right corner, and I also made sure to leave some space above that for a main to-do list. When I was creating the daily sections, I kept an empty space along each line near the outer edges for writing in the days of the week. So here I'm just highlighting that empty space and then I went on to drawing four leaf clovers along the outer edges of each daily section. I only drew one clover under each section and kept them all oriented the same way to make everything look symmetrical and organized, but if you don't like the organized look as much as I do, you could instead overlap a couple of clovers for some of the sections to change up each day. And you probably already guessed it, but this is where I will write in the numbers for the days. To finish the daily sections, I added in the days of the week in the highlighted portion using my regular handwriting and wrote the number of the days within the clovers. You could use a few different lettering styles for the daily headers, so choose whichever one you like the best. In the past, I've used all capital letters, cursive lettering, and of course regular handwriting, and they all look great with the spread. If you end up using cursive, then I suggest connecting the letters to the lines to make it all flow together. And to finish off the spread, I added my main to-do list just above the monthly header and separated it out into two columns. And this would also be a great spot for a mini calendar if you wanted to include one. My fourth spread is similar to one I used in February, but I changed the layout to make it look and feel completely different. The only thing that is the same is the design of the daily boxes. 
So I added seven horizontal boxes stacked vertically with three on the left and four on the right. And I placed them along the outer edge of the page as well as left an empty space in the middle of the inner facing edge. There ended up being an extra space on the top left side because there are only three boxes on that page, so that's where I added the monthly header. Then I added a clover drawing in the empty space I left on the inner edge of each daily section. I chose to completely flip the boxes compared to what I did in February so they aren't too similar looking, but you can keep the clover drawings on the outer edge of the boxes instead and it would still look great. And in the small space left at the top, I just added a large four-leaf clover drawing because nothing else could really fit there. Or you could instead add in the mini calendar to the spot. Then to finish off the daily sections, I wrote in the first three letters of each day in all capital letters, stacking the letters vertically along the outer edge of the box. And then I also added the numbers for each day into the clovers. Again, if you wanted to flip these boxes, then you would just have the clover on the outer edge and the days of the week towards the inner edge. Because I had so much extra space in the middle of this spread, I chose to add a few additional sections, which include a to-do list, notes section, and events. I kept the design of each section the same to make them all cohesive, and I also made sure that the notes and events sections were the same size, as well as lined up with the to-do list on the other side. This is one of the few months of the year where I have five weekly spreads instead of four, and it always seems so difficult to think of a fifth one. But for this last spread, I did another Dutch door layout. I really liked having the large daily sections because I didn't feel restricted with what or how much I could write. Last month, I did a horizontal type Dutch door, so this time I made it vertical by cutting the middle page in half down the center. And as you saw, I put two daily boxes stacked vertically on each page with the last page only having one. Then I added the monthly header along both sides of the spread to make it more symmetrical, but I didn't stretch them along the entire edge as you can see here. Going back to the daily sections, I highlighted a row across the top of each box, which is where I will write in the days of the week, and I placed this part a couple of rows down from the very top of the box. In the extra space under the last daily section, I added my main to-do list in the same style as I made it on all the previous spreads. But if you wanted to make the sections the same, you could instead have the to-do list styled the same way as the daily boxes. Next, I added a four-leaf clover centered at the bottom of each box to hold the number for each day. And I didn't have it incorporated into the outline of the box this time because I was afraid the drawings would get too close to the box below it. Plus, the sections are already so large that it doesn't take away too much space. And then to finish off the monthly header, I added a large clover in the empty spaces on each side of the header. And again, I did this on both edges of the spread. Then to finish off the spread, I added in the daily headers in the highlighted area at the top of the boxes in my regular lowercase handwriting, and also added the numbers for each day within the clovers. I also decided to add horizontal lines on each side of the clovers to connect them to the box to better incorporate them into the actual layout. My first tracker for this month is a habit tracker, and I started by making the header by writing habit centered at the top portion of the page in the same header style I used on all of the previous spreads. Except instead of writing habit again in cursive, I wrote tracker across the bottom of the header in cursive. I've been doing so well this past month with making a conscious effort to fill out all of my trackers, and I found that I feel more obligated to fill them out when I add it as part of my to-do list for every other day. I used to think that I would just remember to fill them out, but that obviously never really worked. So when I started writing it down as a task, I began to fill them out consistently. So if you have the same problem, then definitely try adding it to your to-do list for either every day or every other day to help remind you and motivate you. Plus crossing it off your to-do list is a very satisfying thing and it's an easy one to get done. 
but I went with a very basic habit tracker layout for this month, which is kind of like a calendar layout. I started by drawing symmetrical banners above the space where each tracker will go, and then I drew rows of boxes until I reached 31 under each banner. This ultimately resulted in having four rows of seven boxes with an additional row of three. I also had the tracker portion connect to the banners, but you could leave a space between them if you wanted to instead. Next, I colored in all of the banners with my theme color and wrote in all of the habits that I like to track throughout the month. And then lastly, I added some clovers across the bottom of the page because I had some space left over, but you can omit this part and condense the trackers a bit more to add in two more habits if you like to track more than six. Lastly, for my mood tracker, I wrote the header in the same way as my habit tracker by writing mood centered at the top of the page in the theme color and then writing tracker across the bottom of the header in cursive. Similar to last month, I didn't do any outlining for this tracker because I will be drawing each of the clovers as the days go by, so all I did was write in the numbers for all of the days of the month. I ended up adding six rows of five, making sure to have each section evenly spaced out horizontally across the page, and then a seventh row of one for the 31st day of the month. As you can probably see, I did pencil in where each clover will go to help with making sure each space is the same size. And then I also added in the colors for each mood that I'm going to track throughout the month. But that's all for my 2022 March Plan With Me video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some good ideas for your own journal. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video.